<laughs> hey, everybody. It's episode 17. 17. It's episode 17. 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics, which is our which uh, I should say is is uh, a dumb thing that we are doing. We actually did it. Well, yeah, we succeeded in doing it. Yeah, yeah. Paul, uh, I was on Paul's uh, game show, Paul Goebel, the King of TV. I was on his game show uh, yet yeah, last night, two nights ago, and he. He said nice words about our show. He said, they take, and he, he's, it, it, I like that he was incredulous. He goes, <laughs> right. He goes, they take kind of a deep dive into the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> As if any way you would describe this show doesn't make sense to him. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but he likes the show, which is nice. And I'm getting people writing to me, which is nice. I mean, it's high praise from a guy who memorized the fucking credits to Barney Miller. Right, absolutely. Thinking that was a good way to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and I, uh, Paul and I, I think are similar in this that we haven't necessarily gotten laid a lot, but we've certainly gotten laid more than we deserve. <laughs> <laughs> haven't we all? Wouldn't yeah. you? Say? <laughs> Yeah, well, you're good looking, so. Oh, come on, shut yeah. your mouth. Come on, it's true. I, you're a, you're a... Fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very uh, combative, though. So. Our, our second podcast we're going to be uh, starting soon is Alex and Jim, all about birds. We're going to start this. Ah, uh, you you found out. <laughs> we we um, won't show any pictures of the birds. We'll no, just talk for about legal them. reasons. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't want to get sued by Autobahn. Or by one of the birds. Um, hey, so what's funny is two days ago, I saved a bird's life. That's actually true. How'd you do that? So there was, so we have crows in our neighborhood and I really like crows. They're huh. neat birds. They're very pretty. Tools. They're very, huh? They can use tools. Yes, they're very smart. Yeah. If you're rude to them in some way that you can be rude to a bird, like let's say you throw a little pebble at it or you yell at it or you chase it away, they'll remember you. Oh. And they'll tell their buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how'd you learn that? Uh, that's a thing I read about crows. They'll remember, they'll remember you and go, oh, stay away from that guy. That guy's a jerk. Um, and uh, they'll learn things like that that are useful for long-term living. Okay. Cool. So there was Good a time. crow in my neighborhood and, and I always say, Good morning, Mr. Crow. I just like to do that. <laughs> um, and you're saying, don't get laid a lot. Yeah, <laughs> not as much <laughs> as you think, yeah. <laughs> so I wanna be clear. Waiting for the right crow lady. Who's like, oh, I love crows too. Let's let's make this happen. And I'm like, oh, you're surprisingly good looking, or whatever it happens. Yeah. Um, but I I'll say good morning to the crows because I have a nice morning walk with my dogs. And there is a crow walking. You don't see birds walking a lot. It's true. Just on a stroll. And I was like, oh, that's funny. But you know, maybe he's getting water and it we're getting a little bit closer and it starts walking away from me faster i'm like oh that's not good so uh it because and it goes up into the air about three feet crashes to the ground loses oh. yeah so i managed to get it hold it very gently and it calmed down and seemed to know i was okay and i got called um professionals who take care of birds yeah and just destroyed my morning i was taking a little morning walk this is going to be the first 20 minutes of my day that was four hours but it poor little guy needed some help so there you go saved a crow nice work or sent him to die safer i don't know that's worth something too yeah i would if somebody did that for me i'd be grateful as well either way just I'll see what i can do yeah <laughs> die <safer. laughs> yeah um so the the Song I picked. Well, first of all, I did that show. By the way, Pete Marietta was on the show. Our friend Pete Marietta. Oh, great. And uh, 
he's he uh you know your introduction is stuff about you and mine was that i do this show and some other stuff but i like billy joel and uh pete miranda goes do you know something i hate billy joel i was like what? <laughs> of course he does and he said because billy joel's a liar he said and he said when i was in high school he played we said when he was in high school he played trumpet and he was looking for music and he saw this album with a guy holding a trumpet <laughs> And it was Billy oh. Joel. <laughs> ah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> and I th- yeah, it was. It was a funny bit. And I think you made a similar observation in our in our run so far about how odd it is that there's this picture of him with a trumpet. It's super weird. Yeah. I don't think if you, I mean, yes, there's an implication that you're playing the trumpet, but yeah. it's not necessarily a lie to just go, I have a trumpet. Yeah, that's true. I think he's just saying like, hey, there's jazz on this album. <laughs> yeah. Be- watch out. Yeah. He, uh, that'd be great if there was no trumpets at all on that album. I'm sure there are, but it would be so great if there wasn't. <laughs> it's also like if you want to take a picture of Billy Joel outdoors, it's a real hassle to drag his piano outside. Yeah, that's very true. They were just like, oh, well, just well, just hold this so they know you're a musician. Yeah. Like, eh, all right. Yeah. And as you might imagine, because this is very, very Pete, uh, the, the show got a lot of miles out of that joke. So it was good. Great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so a good show. Yeah. It's a good, fun three hours. Yeah. It's, yeah. He's doing, somehow Paul figured out it needs to be tighter because it was better. Oh, good. Great. Yeah. Well, I'm doing it in a couple of weeks, so I'm excited to uh, see what they manage. Yeah, it's just, I, I and mean, half of it's about the guests, and every single person on the show was a hitter as far as just making jokes. So that's always great. That's all that matters. Yeah, it yeah, it really is. There just needs to be bits, otherwise it's some fucking horseshit. Um, <laughs> otherwise it's uh, uh, Jim. Tell me about how you saved a crow. Ugh. Right. Who wants to watch that? No. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you tell the people what song? Now, here's the song I picked this week, and uh, Alex does not love this song. No. Um, it's a river of dreams, or I guess it's in the middle of the night, parenthesis, river of dreams, is I believe the title of the song. Yes. And uh, it is off of uh, the same album, so it'll be the title track from that album, River of Dreams. Which river of pretty sure is the last studio album is that right that seems right yeah. yes i think so and in my recollection that album overall didn't do particularly well it wasn't it right. wasn't on the charts a lot i'm sure i'm sure it made money i'm sure he did fine on it but it wasn't uh it wasn't what had come before and it maybe was a sort of a Larry Bird moment where you go, okay, I think yeah. I'm out of the coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I, take, I can't think of another hit off of it off the top of my head. There are songs on it that I like. Indeed. Indeed. Um, it's a fine, uh, fine album. It's, it's just not, but, and it's of course to say it's not his best album. Well, they can't all be the best. That's not even an insult. No. You have a series of albums, one of them is going to be the worst one, one of them is going to be the best one, and and some subjective opinions in between. Yeah, and it's certainly not his worst. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get better at the stuff the more you do it. Yeah. But I think you do lose a spark at some point. And, you know, as a 55-year-old comedy writer, <laughs> I'm like uh, acutely aware of that sort of thing. Yeah. It's uh, having a bad day now is like, it's like uh, when a 75 year old man can't remember where his watch is. It's like, oh, this won't, this is, I'm going to lose my watch more and more. Yeah. (laughs) So it, uh, you know, it makes you a little nervous. So maybe he got a little nervous. I don't know. Or I think, you know, he said after he stopped making studio albums, like, I'm just not as good at writing songs anymore. So I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I was like, that's fine. Put together a nice run. 
And it's a lovely but, self-aware thing to say. Yeah. Um, Certainly a thing I, not enough people do. Indeed. You know, and there, and there comes a point too where it becomes sad and you don't want it to be that. And it never became that, you know, if you make enough bad albums after all your good no. work, like I could think of like a Jefferson uh, airplane. Uh, they made so much crap that makes me just think I have no interest in the group at all. And I know their early work was relatively meaningful, but yeah. Lord, did they produce garbage? Sure. For way longer than anybody had to. Absolutely. And more garbage than good. Um, the Rolling Stones, I have a similar opinion too. the Rolling Stones. I'm like, they'll produce a nice song every now and then. And I'm like, I can't fault you guys for enjoying being famous and having sex with people who are younger than you. And that's great. But man, a lot of your music is crap. Yeah. And, you know, again, I think Billy Joel did it right because he like had a nice, what, 10 or 12 studio albums. Yes. And now he's like, I'll still play the stuff. Yep. You can come see me, but it's going to be the same songs that you already know, which is what I want at a concert. Yep. I don't know if that's an old man thing, but I want to know most of the songs. Yeah. And in this case, all of the songs. <laughs> but I it's don't I don't want to be deciding about a song. Yeah. You know, I don't want to pay 150 bucks to go, well, maybe. Let's see. What do you have? I uh so I think I've told you this. I've been to see the bare naked ladies in concert like eight times or something. Yeah. Um one of the first times I went to see them, they debuted a song and I did not enjoy it very much. Yeah. But the last time I saw them, it was one of my favorite songs to see because <laughs> I had eight concerts to see it. And it's a song that includes an audience part. Oh, good. So it's, but it took a while and uh, they're very funny. And one of the things they go, they, they will say the lead singer guy, uh, he said, uh, this, there's a see, there's a part to sing along to, and if you look to, at your neighbor and they're not singing along, just know that means they're racist. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. But yeah, you go to Billy Joel, if you like just knowing what the hell's going on, you're going to like yeah. that. It's just a jukebox. Yep. Like, yeah, I know this one, I know that one. Great. <laughs> That's what I want. So I picked uh, in the um, middle of the in night. In the middle of the night. Is it's not the worst. Yeah. It's just musically not that fun, I think. Yeah. It seems to me like he's doing a little bit of a Graceland thing. Um, it's a lot of production. I like the stripped down stuff a little more. Yeah. It's gospel-y. But I will say, I went back and looked at the lyrics, of course, before doing this, since we're all about the lyrics. Um, and it is a it's kind of a tragic song in a lot of ways. It's, yes. I think I mentioned this one, I, when I first brought up the song, first of all, by the way, spot on, when I'm listening to it, I'm like, yeah, this is a Graceland. This, you, you're absolutely right. This is, I liked that album. Uh, can I have that? Right. And the gospel -y stuff is, you know, it can come across as silly yes. because you're a white guy and you're doing this thing. And I don't think it comes across as offensive. I think it comes across as you're trying. Yeah. But, but definitely the parts in the beginning when you're going, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> and, yeah at least paul simon was like i'm just gonna keep being paul simon and then i'll hire people to do the other stuff it's funny because it gets better when he comes out of that note because he'll go he'll go and then he'll go ha ah, and you go okay that's your note your note is ha ah, do that <laughs> one the range now great yeah. and it doesn't that one doesn't feel forced it doesn't feel like you're trying feels like you were being gospel guy who should be in a robe in a bad Tyler Perry movie at church, and then you became <laughs> Billy Joel. Yeah, and then you went back and you became that thing again. But the thing. Um, yeah, but I think I mentioned when we first brought this up, which might have been in episode one. 
<laughs> uh, possible. Uh, that I like the lyrics to this song and find them kind of funny because it, uh, tragic for sure, but funny that I find it, I find it funny that it almost seems like this is a gospel song by an atheist. And it's interesting to me in that regard. Yeah. It and does I, not have the quality of gospel, the certainty that a lot of gospel songs have. And it makes me like the song because of that. I like that because uh, at least that I haven't heard before. Lyrically, I haven't heard a song drenched in doubt where doubt wasn't the enemy. <laughs> You'll find a gospel song with doubt, but doubt in that song is right. the enemy. This is not. This is just the condition of man. Uh, and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's some silly stuff. So listen, I'll do the uh, first one and you do the second one. Sound good? Sounds good. <laughs> in the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep from the mountains of faith to the river so deep. Um, that part is atypical that's that's a setup that you've heard a version of that before but i like this next part seems to do something that i haven't heard before he says i must be looking for something something sacred i lost but i like that he doesn't know exactly what it was <laughs> right or that he's even looking for it i must be looking for something yeah you're right he doesn't even know <laughs> and some of that feels like like taking into account when he wrote it or not it feels like it could be spiritual or it could be youth spark hope drive mm -hmm. those kinds of things that did i lose something because i don't feel like i lost something but lord do i feel something empty yeah something missing and I that's Kind of poignant if you think about how late in the career this song is. Yes. So he says, I must be looking for something, something sacred I lost. And you're right. I must be looking for something. So what's wrong with me? I got this hole here. But the river is wide and it's too hard to cross. I like that too. The river is wide. I'm not going to make it across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I there's probably there's a lot of good i'm guessing semi unintentional <laughs> metaphor stuff yeah. uh, there's certain you know every mythology has a river that you cross when you die sure um so i think i doubt that he had that in mind but maybe i give him very little credit <laughs> for <laughs> for knowing yeah. like mythology or knowing his own references <laughs> maybe i'm wrong um it is very typical, like first verse gospel stuff. Yeah. Oh, the odds are all stacked against me. Um, but usually the answer is like, but my faith will get me through everything and here and now I'm happy. And that just <laughs> never comes to pass in this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's so a, great. It just doesn't start up. Um, I don't like things like mountains of faith and river of dreams. They feel very much like college poetry. Sure. Metaphors are like, uh, what is a river of dreams? I mean, I, it's literal in this case. In fact, he, I go walking in my sleep. So, oh, it's the river front that's in your dream. Okay. Yeah. The river of dreams. Um, yeah, it's a, just a little junior. Do you think maybe it's also a little bit about ambient? <laughs> uh, it'd be great if it was right um i'll do the next thing yes even though i know the river is wide <laughs> i walk down every evening and stand on the shore i try to cross to the opposite side so i can finally find what i've been looking for this uh makes me think of him like sitting down at the piano and trying to write something yeah and going, ah, oh, fucking suck. Uh, writer's block. I oh. Can't, I can't get to it. I used to be able to sit down and bang out songs. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I know the river is wide. Like, I know this is challenging, but Jesus, I got nothing. Yeah. 
That's, I, I mean, obviously it's such a heavy metaphor that it's hard to know what he's talking about. I don't know if it's about that. I don't know if it's about love, which would be very tragic because he supposedly was very happy in his love life at this point. Sure. It's weird to like have been with Christy Brinkley for several years at this point and still be like, oh, I hope I finally find what I'm looking for. Yeah. It You're a fucking like little fire hydrant from Long Island <laughs> married to a supermodel. Like, I think man, maybe that's part of it. It's like, oh, I thought I'd be happy and I'm not. And so uh, what am I looking for? I must be searching for something. Oh, oh! if it isn't this, oh yeah. If it isn't yeah. this, what the if hell this is this? If this doesn't make me happy, then what, how big is this hole inside me? Yeah. I could absolutely see that. And I could definitely see the... Um... Although I will say, she seems like a dud. <laughs> <Does she? laughs> She's very pretty, but yeah, probably, uh, I don't know. I don't want to judge her too harshly. And I'm not doing it on appearance. I've seen interviews with her and it seems like she'd be a dull conversationalist. Yeah, I could, yeah. And, ah, uh, you know, you're with a person and if they, if you are with them for physical reasons, then the physical reasons are always a blast when you're doing physical things. <laughs> right. When people are naked and doing that kind of stuff, but there's always a point when you're done doing those things the other 23 hours and 58 minutes. Yeah, yes. And you're like, Lord. You're so, like, oh, right. I have to also watch this person eat. <laughs> <laughs> what are your interests? None. You don't, you don't have interests. Uh -huh. Actually, if somebody ever huh. said that, they'd be a good person to talk to. If somebody literally goes, what are you into? Nothing. I'm not into anything. I don't have interests. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd want to know more. Okay, listen, that's my next made up thing at a party. I'm going to say that because that's <laughs> please. I hope you do. I will. Hey, I'm the guy who I went to a Hollywood party wearing a wig that was obviously a wig just to make people go, that guy just have chemo. <laughs> uh, and did nobody say anything about your wig? It was amazing because it was a Hollywood party filled with Hollywood people. The one person who said something was somebody who had also recently moved from back east. <laughs> Great. And it was this lady comic. I wish I could remember her name because she's hilarious. And she reached over, uh, grabbed the wig and went, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best reaction to that. And I ended up talking to her for like an hour just because she was hilarious. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> what I, wanted, I don't know if that's what I wanted really, but I do like being uh, um, put in my place by women. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, And you love it when people hate your bits. Strangely enough, yeah. Yeah. I love both those things. And I'm learning to understand that as a professional, appreciate the other one more. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in your free time, yeah, yeah, the bits, uh, yeah, make people hate your bits. You can be a bit masochist in your free time. Yeah, but it pays really poorly. Um, I made I made Paul mad. I because the joke I made is, do you? Th it would be great if Tom Hanks directed a superhero, the next superhero movie for DC, and he directed Oneider Woman. And he goes, <laughs> oh, damn it! I was like, you get it? And he goes, yes. <laughs> uh, it's so fun making him mad which it really shouldn't be because it's so easy yeah it's straight yeah the joy is easy to get to <laughs> <laughs> it really is <laughs> he's ever that way so that i could wow that's interesting yeah being yeah it is just a sad song because you're with the woman who who well or it's a if you finally realize, oh, it isn't that, I got to have somebody I could talk to. Because he's got a lot of songs about how he's got a misogynistic point of view, but that more like he's got an old-fashioned point of view. So if he cracks through that or has cracked through that, then you'll get to what you're looking for. I do like about this song that he isn't the competent one. So many of his songs are like, I am smart and cool and everybody else is doing things incorrectly. Yeah. And I'm looking down on them for doing things incorrectly. And yeah. this one is like, I'm lost. and <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And isn't that the truth about when you finally get to be 
in your 40s, if you've been paying attention, you go, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. My confidence was wrong. Yeah, I maybe need some help. And you become more tolerable. You become kinder um, if you're doing it right. Because you're paying attention. If you're doing it right, some people just double down and get worse. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know. And those people hopefully are alone for real, like, cause you're not good. Yeah. You know? And they're still making albums. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're like, no, these are great songs. They're still I know making- I'm 73, but. Yeah. They're still making albums and they call themselves the Beach Boys, even though there's no Brian Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots. Idiots. Uh, my observation is if going to see the Beach Boys without Brian Wilson is in. Like if you went and saw Ringo Starr and he came out and went, hi, everybody, I'm the Beatles. <laughs> no, yeah. With the difference being that Ringo seems like a perfectly pleasant fellow. I think he would say, I love lucky I was a Beatle. Yep. I'm bad at drums. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he'd say that. <laughs> so then we go into what I guess is a chorusy kind of part. In the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep through the valley of fear to a river so deep. Uh, this next part, it's funny because they almost all start out with a cliche. Yes. But the cliche, I don't mind because it feels like it's in service of something bigger, which is the part that we like. And you almost need the cliche to say to the, uh, to the listener, okay, this is the kind of song you're listening to. But also, because right up to a river so deep, he says, I've been searching for something taken out of my soul, something I'd never lose, something somebody stole. I like that a lot. (laughs) That is, uh, now he's uh, blaming other people again. He's mad, (laughs) but that's such a valid feeling within... Uh, that's such a valid processing of whatever kind of loss, you know, right. uh, this last year, my dog uh, buddy passed away and um, Mary Jo can tell you that I, I'm more or less a skeptic, but the only time I kind of believe in God is when something bad happens, because I think I sometimes think, and this is just me, there might be a God but man, is he a royal prick. <laughs> and I will be angry for a few days as part of my processing. One of my sillier jokes is I, I say, I hope that if, I, if there is a God, that he wears a collared shirt. That's what I hope. So <laughs> that when I meet him, I can go, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and, but it's a, it's a, you know, so I get, I think that's a valid part of processing. Like, I'm mad. I don't understand why this went this way or why I feel this way. Right. It is in direct contradiction to what he said earlier. (laughs) Um, You know, uh, something sacred I lost is what he says earlier. And now he's like, "Uh, I'd never lose. Somebody stole it. (laughs) Um, Which, you know, it's like one of the stages of losing things. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> even little physical objects you're like oh fuck where did i put my watch oh shit somebody stole my watch <laughs> and the next thing is like oh there's my watch yeah <laughs> um but yeah it is like a little progression you have to go through yeah um but it, i did it, it is funny that even in this song there's a little of the old billy joel it was like i didn't fuck up everybody else fucked up <laughs> oh, buddy <laughs> Even in your gospel song, you're like fucking making accusations. Uh, which <laughs> I, I so relate to. I really do. Like just. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's why we like the guy. He's uh he's petty. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Uh, I don't know why I go walking at night, but now I'm tired and I don't want to walk anymore. I hope it doesn't take the rest of my life until I find what it is that I've been looking for. Oy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tired, don't want to walk anymore is very last album. 
Have you ever, did you ever have the, the book of lists? I don't think so. When all us nerd kids had like the Guinness Book of World Records, right? We'd walk around with that thing at school and show girls and they'd run away. Yeah. There was later, like a couple of years later, there was a thing that came out called the Book of Lists. And it was just a thousand pages of various lists. And one of the lists was um, the titles of a lot of rock and roll performers who died young, their last songs. And it was like 14 songs and they all were very poignant. You know, obviously it was a very carefully curated list. Um, and, and, you know, while this isn't a title, it certainly fits into that list. I'm tired and I don't want to walk anymore. Yeah. Like one of them was hanging up my rock and roll shoes, which was, uh, I think, Buddy Holly's last song. Oh, yeah. Which, why did you even write that when you were 23? But yeah. Um, it does feel like a signal. Like, don't wait around for another album because I can't find the thing that I need yeah. to make one. Yep, and and it's not. And I, I'm sure you've had this feeling uh, a thousand times because performance, I think, get it a lot of times. There's, I'll do a show. I've done shows where it was a crushing night. And then it was like, it was a great crowd. It was full. Everybody's laughing. Handshakes afterwards. And, you know, hey, you're so funny. And walking through the casino floor or wherever you were. And then being in the hotel and going, you know, I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, I should feel better after that. Yeah. And I, I, I know I ate. It's not that. I know. <laughs> no, I got friends. Yeah. I got friends. People love me. I got people who care about me. Well, that's bad when you're doing the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, we've been doing our show with no audience for a year now. Right. So <laughs> every day kind of feels like that. I, you know, I work all day on the show. I've been going into the office sure. and then I go into the studio to watch the show with like eight people on the crew and like cameramen and me. And uh, it's rollicking. It's very fun when it's happening. And Seth is great. And then it, he's like, all right, good night, everybody. And then there's no applause <laughs> and the lights come up and Seth walks away. And then you're like, oh, okay. I don't, I have no idea how that went. There's yeah. no way to know. Even though you were just having fun a minute ago, you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then you get on the subway <laughs> and go home. Yeah, oh Lord. Uh, it's it's so weird yeah it's like uh remember when monday night football decided they would broadcast without commentators once as an experiment did you ever see that yeah and it wasn't too good it wasn't too good and then you were like oh that's i'm watching the commentary and the football game is there to facilitate this conversation <laughs> yeah. between these commentators whose voices i enjoy oh no have you ever watched Inside the NBA with Charles Barkley and? Oh yes, um, the best. I like that better than watching a basketball game, and I like basketball. Yeah, I watch that whole show, and then they'll, and then they'll start the game. And I'm, eh. <laughs> I'll come back when there's three minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah, <laughs> unless there's a, I don't know, unless it's such a, crew, a key matchup that I'm really fascinated by. But for the most part, yeah. Like if Lynn actually makes it back to the NBA, he might, by the way, you're a New York guy. I have heard. He may make it back to Golden State because, and he'd be incredible for what they need because it's the perfect situation. Their, their starting five are great. Their bench is problematic. So uh -huh. you're like, oh, right. He could be the guy on the bench who gives you yeah. six to 10 points, um, decent ball handling, Oh Lord, yeah. Fresh legs. Yep. I and like that expression. He uh so he's in the G League because it's the Gatorade League. And uh he uh <laughs> the Gatorade League Golden State team is doing better than the NBA Golden State team record wise. Oh. So that's one of the reasons they're getting notice. Okay. So he'd get demoted. Yeah, he'd be to the sixth he'd... or seventh man, which would be great. Anyway, that's what the show's about. Anyway, Jim, I like sock sports. 
<laughs> you know, send your sports questions to one 800 Billy Joel. One eight hundred wasn't this about Billy Joel? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, I think it's your turn. I'll go. Here we go again. In the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep through the jungle of doubt <laughs> to a river so deep. I know I'm searching for something. Ah. Oh. Something so undefined that it can only be seen by the eyes of the blind. No good. No good? Oh, um, I don't think it can only be seen by the eyes of the blind is the one that I doesn't work for me. Does it work <laughs> for you? It's one of those things that sounds profound. Yeah. And then you read it again and you're like, oh yeah, that just sounds good when you sing it but it doesn't mean anything or make sense. Yeah. Unless it's a super clever reference to like Ray Charles or Stevie Wonder. <laughs> right? No, oh <laughs> Lord, okay, you know what? Maybe, and I could give him credit if he's at the end of the ropes, his ropes as far as like figuring out music. So I like something so undefined because yeah. reiterating, I'm not quite sure what the problem is. Yeah. Okay, now if, if you just unlocked it, because that's not <laughs> bad then. That's interesting. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's what he meant. I hope it is. I hope it is. I feel like he probably just was like, ooh, that sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, but if you are him, a career piano player, it might be one of the first things that comes to the front of your mind when you talk about blindness. Yeah. I, so. I, no way to know. The problem is there's so much garbage in the song. <laughs> that yeah. it's, it's hard to believe that anything is a gem. Yeah. Also, oh, I have. Jungles of doubt. Look out for the jungle of doubt. <laughs> so this it's, a big, it, uh, it's a D and D pride. Question. We're in the princess pride. Right, it's or a D and D quest, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the jungle of doubt. Roll your ten-sided die. <laughs> oh, you were crushed by doubt. <laughs> you have to go home. I'll call your dad. Then you are attacked by no doubt, and it's the group no doubt and monsters, though. <laughs> Tell the people what casino you're at next week. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, by the way, a long-standing complaint of mine throughout my life. Do you? Uh, Many years ago, there's this kid named Matty Stefanovic. Do you do you know the name? Yes. So poor kid, he was born uh, with uh, some, just he wasn't gonna live long, whatever medical condition he had. And his poor mother, she had had two kids and they both had the same thing. And he was on borrowed time. And he, uh, but he lived longer than he was maybe counted on to live, which is nice, um, which is, some people call a miracle and then I'm like, apparently miracles are shittier than they should be because yeah. him getting better was, to me would be pretty great. But oh, yeah. he wrote these books and they were inspirational books and my wife loved them. He was on Oprah and we were at uh, some little cottage bookstore one time and we got a signed copy and it wasn't very nice. But I always find it irritating that if somebody has a debilitating disease and they want to be a source of inspiration for you, cool. But don't you ask them to be that. Yeah. They don't owe you that. And somebody blind doesn't owe you <laughs> being a, a source of wisdom. It's a kind of uh, fetishizing people who have conditions like that. And I don't like that. I think probably partly because so my sister's deaf, my dad had one leg, and you know, that's all anybody wants to talk about. And I'm like, and they're also people, just so you know. Right. And they can, yeah, you can have one leg and also be a dick. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're like a magically inspirational person. Yeah, and you're deaf. You can have a whole body and live for 95 years and be inspirational too. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is the same. Yeah, it's similar to the, uh, the magical black person that shows up in movies. Yep. Like, well, let the guy be black. Why does he have to give you advice? The damn native who you're like, you got a, 
what's your native wisdom? Ah. Yeah. You guys shouldn't have killed us? Was that good enough, you idiot? Yeah. You want me to tell you which berries to eat? <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, so I think that's why this line hits me as just one cliche too many, coupled with the fact that prior to this, what I've liked in the lyrics is that we started out with a cliche and then it used the cliche to get to not a cliche. Yeah. And this one just, this one. <laughs> yeah. But on the other hand, I hadn't even considered what you brought up, and that's a really good thought. If he's thinking about a specific couple blind people that are in his peer group, and hey, they can still write great music. Why? What's right. or they found? Or maybe it's that stupid thing of like, oh man, I wish I was blind. I'd be better at the piano. <laughs> Oh, stupid neighbors wish I was deaf. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then he says, in the middle of the night. Now, this is, uh, I think this worked out happily that it happens to be my turn because this might be my favorite lyric in the song. I'm not sure about a life after this. God knows I've never been a spiritual man. Cute. Uh, I like that a lot. <laughs> God knows. Yeah. I've never been a spiritual man. That's very cute. I do. Yeah. And I like here we are in the middle of, uh, of the night, but yeah. we're, <laughs> we're in the middle of a gospel y <laughs> song. And he's like, we've heard all, and he's done all the, the vocal tricks are all gospel. And he's like, yeah, but let's not go too, <laughs> right. Too. I got, I'm not sure about a life after this. God knows I've never been a spiritual man. Baptized by the fire, I wade into the river that runs to the promised land. Not that one. Uh, I'm not sure. Explain that to me. I'm not sure. About <laughs> I wish I could. Baptized by fire uh, makes sense. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, usually you're baptized in the river. So yeah. He's baptized by fire and wades into the river that runs to the promised land. I feel like it's just a lot of stuff that sounds good when you sing it, and it's a. Uh, it's cliches. Yeah. I feel like we're doing every topographic feature. <laughs> Mountains and valleys and jungles and the river. Right. And now we're doing fire and water. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just don't song, know that there's anything there. If it were a longer song, there would be a cul-de-sac of worry or... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a mesa of justice. <laughs> uh, I think it's weird to say, like, God knows I've never been a spiritual man. And then immediately I'm wading into the river that runs to the promised land. Yeah. Which maybe, is. Maybe. Okay, I'm glad you said it that way, because that maybe gives me a clue. Maybe what we're trying to get at is. Um, well, you know, wading into wading into any pool, like you wade into a pool is when you put your toes in to because it's a little colder, you're not sure if you want to get in the pool. Wading into the river of the promised land, it could be meant that way, like, but here I am. I'm gonna try this. I'm I might even try praying. I feel dumb doing it. I've never been sure anyone was listening, but what I've been doing so far hasn't been working. Or is it just, ugh, I don't have any ideas for a song. What Let if I tried start. to write a religious song? <laughs> right. Or it's, uh, you know, I think it's just this verse needs a but in the middle of it. Like, I'm not sure about a life after this. I've never been a spiritual man, but let me wade into the river that runs to the promised land. Yeah, okay. See, well, I'll just start writing something and see what happens. I, I don't know. Yeah. You're giving us a lot of credit, I think. <laughs> I think it also was just like, let me write some lyrics that also sound like gospel <laughs> so that they match the song. Yeah, I can see that. I can absolutely see that. And the song, and it's gonna, you'll, you'll take us out on the last one, but the song seems to end on a, either a potential 
note of hope or acceptance. Let's see what we think. It's very Jonathan Livingston Seagull to me. In the middle of the night, I go walking in my sleep. Yes, we know. Through the desert of truth. <laughs> ah, ah, to the river so deep. We all end in the ocean. We all start in the streams. We're all carried along by the river of dreams. <sighs> yeah. I don't know if there's a one-for-one -one translation of like, what is the river of dreams? Yeah. Is it like when you choose the artistic pathway in early life, are you now in the river of dreams as opposed to like the river of commerce or something? <laughs> like, uh, oh, we all start in the streams, you know, we all start in the small clubs and then we all end up in the main room, baby. Yeah. I cannot tell. It, it is sort of like, a, I feel like it's positive. I do. So I feel like you end up in the ocean is the Buddhist metaphor, right? There's Sue. There's uh, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> the so the the ocean, of course, is the Buddhist metaphor, which is like, you know, the wave crashes on the on the on the shore. Uh, the wave is gone, um, but the water that made up the wave remains. Um, the wave was just the form the water took, which is us, right? Right. We go back to the ocean. I think there's uh, possibly what we're saying is, well, I don't know what I'm looking for, but at the end of the day, we all end up in the same place. It could be that. Right. Yeah, it could be as simple as like, everyone, well, we all die eventually, so I might as well just start writing a song. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go to those extremes in your head to start anything. Yeah. Like, well, in a hundred years, we'll all be dead. So uh, I'll just rent this apartment. <laughs> just so you can pull the trigger on something. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so you don't get paralyzed by analysis. Here's a thought I had, by the way. You go, you rent an apartment. And yeah. if somebody has died there, they have to disclose that. Right. And it has occurred to me that considering the amount of people who have lived and most of them have died, most of the people who have lived have died. Yeah. I'm like, ah, see if you can just tell me the one place where somebody didn't die. I don't, it doesn't. Yeah, that's where you want to be. Yeah, because they've died everywhere. That's, yeah. Get me that, that death proof studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a doorman. Yeah. <laughs> Some things are not worth it. <laughs> I don't want to live forever without a doorman. Hey, does your place have a doorman? No. Okay. So we're talking about moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So if you see a different background one day, that'll be why. Or uh, I will have changed uh, chairs. Yeah. <laughs> There's many things <laughs> could have happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And as the, are you going to scope out a place with a doorman? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never learn. <laughs> <laughs> I had a doorman once, and he still follows me on Instagram, which I think is weird. <laughs> uh my favorite doorman story uh, uh frank sinatra uh goes to some hotel there's a doorman there and he and frank sinatra says hey what's the biggest tip you ever got and he goes uh five hundred dollars he goes all right here's a thousand dollars he goes who gave you the five hundred dollars he goes you did mr sinatra <laughs> true story right and i'm sure 100 uh, too true i'm sure i'm sure he says the same thing to every doorman yeah, like jacking up his own price. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, thousand dollars. Oh, here's two thousand. The notch declares bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. Doorman buys building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, in the middle of the night, which I, you know, maybe that's the. The cold, dark night of the soul. Yeah. The metaphorical night. By the way, is there any metaphor more overused than night? It's probably the first metaphor. Yeah. They're like, oh, this sucks. This is like night. 
<laughs> I can't yep. see any animals <laughs> that might try to kill me when I go to back to my cave. Yep. Fucking night sucks. I, I, in LA, there's an old thing people say about the night. There's so many in the stars in the sky you could not count. And it occurred to me that in LA, that's not true. <laughs> no, there is. In LA, there's four. Yeah, I you think. Can count them all. Yeah. And I remember. <laughs> I remember going on vacation. I was doing a comedy festival in Oregon and uh, I was out staying in some nice cabin and I looked out and I was like, all right, I forgot this guy. And it was lovely to see. I had, I actually miss it sometimes. I'm like, okay, I should go out and see that sometimes. Yeah. It's weirdly good for you. Yeah. 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 One good thing about Arizona. <laughs> yeah that's true and uh eg's has decent sandwiches oh yeah there's two good things about arizona that's right. it that's it wait <laughs> my family's there so that's still two good things <laughs> <laughs> i hope they don't watch <laughs> <laughs> or i hope they do <laughs> <laughs> they won't learn they'll never learn uh anyway so i've been kind of hiding part of the picture i've been wondering what's behind you ah oh, it's a little boat a little toy boat a little toy boat uh but it's in a pool yeah so instead of focusing on the pool i'll just tell you um focus on the color of the water ah uh, blue water what is green it water? it's greenish it's greenish blue green blue green, green. Yeah. teal is it teal water? <laughs> green, teal. There's probably uh -huh. another word you could describe it with. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> crystal? Is it crystal? It is a crystal. Oh, is it sapphire? Is it it's emerald? It's emerald green. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a precious stone. Yep. God damn it. Jim, you, how am I so bad at this game? I might be bad at clues too, let's be fair. No, but... I think you're generally pretty good. So- um, You're sailing on the emerald green waters. Yes, yes, I am. Yes, you are. And that is from, so it goes? No. no. Is it from Lullaby? It's from Lullaby, this same album. Why do I, th what's the lullaby is the parentheses, right? Yeah. Was that the title? Yeah. Good, Good night, night, my angel. Yes. When we went sailing on an emerald bay. Yeah. And I was playing with how, what the clue should be, and I felt like a toy boat made the most sense. Yep. Poetically, just thinking about what he's talking about, because it's just a little kid. Just know yeah. that I love you. And very cute, sweet little song. Yeah. Like, yeah, remember when we did that nice thing? Now go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me, so that reminds me of a Beatles kind of thing to do, but not like he was trying to do a Beatles thing, but it's a tiny little song that's objectively not meant to be played on the radio. It's not a <laughs> hit. It's meant to be for his kid. Yeah. And I like that a lot. Those it's are a, always great. Yeah. Because you're like, oh shit, I want to be a kid and have some, like my parents didn't sing shit. Yeah. Like um, didn't write anything for me. Yeah, like Her Majesty. That song by the the song Her Majesty by the Beatles is clearly not meant to ever be played anywhere. <laughs> it's just but for it's fun. nice to hear. You remember that song? I don't offhand. Her Majesty's a pretty nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her Majesty's a really nice girl, but she changes from day to day. Want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. Yeah. Her Majesty's oh, yeah. a really nice girl, but someday I'm gonna make her mine. Someday I'm gonna make her mine. Oh yeah. And that's the whole song. <laughs> Fantastic. I just did the whole damn song. And well, here comes the lawsuit. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. We're fucking doomed. <laughs> you know how litigious McCartney is and what a big fan he is of these kinds of shows. Oh, yes. He has a lot of free time. Hopefully, Bruno Mars doesn't tell him. That's all. Oh, God. Yeah. That's the only it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, you know that normally I would do the trivia question first, but that leads me very nicely into the song I picked for next week. 
oh. that does that does involve a boat sailing on a bay. In fact, I think he probably wrote lullaby to sing to his little girl, Alexa. Oh. Which means <laughs> my Alexa just came on. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I don't know that one. She doesn't know that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about Down Easter Alexa next time. Awesome, that's great. Um, and I want to mention too. We'll keep with the water you, theme. Before you do your trivia, I want to mention you mentioned a, a sappy singer that you and Sue listened to, and I'm blanking. Yeah, out. David was, Wilcox. I listened to David Wilcox. Yeah, it was fantastic. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. I loved it, and I was even going to mention that um, River of Dreams, um, um, Second Wind. Uh, even tell her about it to some degree there's a few songs that are and this is one of them uh, Billy Joel does that are very sincere and sometimes yeah. you can feel stupid enjoying them because that is the one of the banes of existence is not a, that you sometimes don't allow yourselves just to enjoy something yeah and when I'm in the right headspace, I'm like, okay, this may not be a great song, but I like it. And it's nice. He's being nice. Yep. I mean, all we talk about is what a dick he is. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, you can get your second wind. And we're like, you loser. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he tried to be nice for one song. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, uh, they're not as good. But they're joyful. Yeah. That should be worth something. Absolutely. And uh, that's what I was thinking with the David Wilcox. I was like, this is nice. Yeah. Have you ever listened to KT Tinsdale? No. You have. Wait, I maybe know one or two songs. She's got that song that goes, woohoo. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> the horse in a cherry tree song. Yeah. I yeah. like her a lot. I like listening to her a lot. And I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure it's good. But even if it wasn't, I was like, it's just full of such uh, life and joy. And I'm like, OK, I could use a little more of this. Yeah. Um, I think uh, there were people when we were younger who definitely thrived on the idea of liking stuff. If you like the wrong stuff, you were lame. Right. Um, which obviously you and I heard a lot of. And, but I felt like they were always living on a fucking razor's edge that, you know, somebody would turn it back on them. Yeah. And they could only like, like Sonic Youth, <laughs> but only that one album. And then like they, their listening lives were so narrow. Yeah. I hope they all went home and just listened to like James Taylor, <laughs> like yeah. secretly. Yep. Um, the only, per you know, the people I think of now, those people, who are in their 50s now are mostly miserable. Yeah. I, probably a coincidence, but maybe not. Yeah. And I, I know a fella who was like that as a kid who's not like that now and he's doing good. And yeah. it's good for him. But yeah, a lot of them just end up being, you know, complainy fucks. And you're like, ah, come on. Yeah. Just it's, it's so absurd because literally, you know, you listen to Sonic Youth and I listen to James Taylor. We're doing the same thing. We're sitting down and somebody else is doing a song. Right. Why you don't get to be better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Our albums were the same price. Yep. We're both losers. Yep. And if you listen to Starry Starry Night and you don't cry, well, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, look into that. Yeah. That's a symptom. Yep. Um, I don't know about the reliability of the trivia I found love it <laughs> so but i will say that the according to this trivia billy joel is the number three selling solo artist of all time oh okay number three that seems high right no it doesn't well, because he has a discography that's a little bit that's somewhat like the beatles in that there was a period of time where every album charted. Yeah. Every true. single one. And he had he did a lot of albums. 
Uh, maybe. True, it was around for a long time. Now, nah, uh, I don't know. Three does maybe seem high. Who else would it be? So who are the, it's the Beatles. So the question is, who is one and two? Okay. Oh, okay. So, solo artists. Solo. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Michael Jackson. Wait, I'm, Sue is lip syncing her guesses at me and I can't tell what she's saying. Michael no, no, no. Jackson. Okay, so far you're both wrong. Oh. Not Michael Jackson. Not uh, Carol King. Frank Sinatra. No. Wow. No. It's not Prince. It can't be. Prince is too niche. No Prince. And uh, and it even should be. there's the King. Elvis Presley. Okay. Number one. Paul McCartney. No. Elvis Presley, Paul McCartney. Think across the genres. Oh. Elvis Presley. Dolly Parton. It is Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Lord. Okay. I wouldn't, I'd have never got there. Worldwide sensation. Wow. Um, yeah. So I don't, again, some website says um, it was WebMD. So I don't know if it's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, cancer is number four. <laughs> well, I went to see cancer. Um, um, did I wouldn't have guessed Garth Brooks because I know he was huge when he was huge, but I he it seemed to me that he had stopped fairly quickly. I don't know. Yeah, he had like I would say four albums that really sold like crazy, and then he kind of disappeared. I, he probably had seven albums altogether. Yeah. Maybe eight. Um, but really four that like exploded, but they really exploded. Yeah. I mean, everybody. It was, you know, he can go anywhere in the world and play certain songs. Yeah. And he had people who wouldn't typically have even thought about buying a country album because they just are the people who go, I don't like country, but they were like, oh, I got that album. We got to get that album. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, like I really liked the Dixie Chicks a lot. Yeah, just they were still doing stuff. I think they're still doing stuff, but they're still doing stuff. I think uh, we had we had them on recently. Oh, awesome! Which either means a new album or a documentary is coming out. And were they back together? Where Natalie Maines is with with them? Yeah. Good. Okay, because yeah. they broke up for a little bit. With uh, Natalie Maines went off and did I think a solo project. Right. And I get yep. the impression that she's a handful in a good way i just think she's very opinionated sure good i mean she's earned it they yeah all have. yeah she has that thing of like like freddie mercury where you're like he's kind of being real opinionated about what we should record and you're like yeah but he's freddie mercury right yeah so. he was right about a lot of stuff yeah and i kind of feel like because she's charting her own path and because she wasn't their original lead singer and she's the lead singer that got uh -huh. him on the top very no, much I like queen. that huh i didn't realize that very much like queen it's it's weird that i picked that out because i just realized it's an apt comparison in that regard um you know freddie mercury wasn't their original lead singer yeah. and but of course he might as well have been yeah yeah there isn't really any queen without it yeah it's like saying well you know originally Paul McCartney wasn't actually in the Beatles. It was these other guys. Oh, really? Really? Is that important to this group? Because. <laughs> yeah. That is true. But all right. So next week, it's the Alexa Downeaster. Or the Downeaster Alexa. It's the Downeaster Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, stop. All right. That's so funny. It's really fun. <laughs> um, I got my mom one of those, and it's the only thing she's polite to. It's really funny. To me, she's like, go get that. Get over there. Stay out of this. And then she's like, Alexa, can you please tell me the weather? Thank you very much, Alexa. And I'm like, it's so weird. It must be old people robot fear. Uh, uh, so I have this moment a lot. This is the moment where I lament that you don't do stand-up because that'd be such a lovely bit. 
and the whole yeah. audience would relate to it it would be good on the road it would just that's such a funny observation um lament not my friend yeah i will find an outlet <laughs> yeah no i know i just i feel bad for i ha i do this weird uh, i feel bad for stand-up <laughs> That's very kind. <laughs> I like stand up a lot. And sometimes I'll hear a thing. I'm like, oh, see, son of a bitch. That would be something that nobody's saying. You know, my friend Tom, I told you about Tom. He used to do this character. He was a vampire uh, stand up comic. And my uh -huh. favorite part of it was he would do these vampire centric jokes. But my favorite part was then there would also be jokes that were just about other things. <laughs> great because that's a vampire wouldn't do only vampire jokes yep he wants to he wants to be accessible <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great the problem for the vampire show by the vampire comedian by the way he cannot do the early show oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh. all right well uh, uh thank you to the people who do listen and write to me and stuff and uh uh thanks i'm glad alex likes doing the show and uh, the oddity that some of you like, it makes me very happy. Um, yeah. Thanks, nice people. And I'm going to write down the the number 18 so that next week I don't go, oh, what, what episode is this? <laughs> Perfect. But I promise I still will. All yeah, right. you don't know. <laughs> Good night. Like, Welcome to episode 81. <laughs> oh, fuck, it's upside down. <laughs>